Christopher asks, why were 21 million Bitcoin identified as the maximum supply number? Can this amount be changed since the code is open source? Or are they somehow inherently embedded into the code in a way that it cannot be modified? This is really a great question. And it's one of the things that started my journey into the source code of Bitcoin back in 2012. So I had heard, like most people who are new to this space, there can never be 21 million Bitcoin. And so I was wondering if uh, I would be able to open the code and find um, somewhere uh, this number. Uh, 21 million, and then based on this number, that I would be able to find somewhere in the code, like an if statement that said, if the next block greater than 21, or if the sum of all of the rewards greater than 21 million Bitcoin stop issuing Bitcoin, or something like that. But that's not how it works. Um, interestingly enough, the 21 million Bitcoin, um, although it exists as a constant in the code. Um, is not checked uh, on a per block basis as you would expect. It's an emergent number that emerges from um, the way that the reward or block subsidy is issued. So how did we arrive at 21 million Bitcoin? Some people think it's actually a mistake um, uh, that it was by accident and the, the desired number was 42 million Bitcoin. Not that it really makes any difference, because the number of Bitcoin that is going to be issued, it is an arbitrary number. It doesn't really matter. Um, as a unit of measurement, it doesn't matter. In the code, what you will see is the block subsidy being checked with every block by every participant in the network. And what the uh, rule is, is to look at how many blocks have elapsed since the Genesis block, Divide that by 210,000 blocks, and therefore calculate what the current block subsidy should be based on the number of halvings that have happened. So, we start with 50 Bitcoin per block as subsidy, and then after the first 210,000 blocks, there is a halving, which is when the block subsidy is divided by two, and then you have 25 Bitcoin issued per block as the block subsidy, and then 210,000 blocks later, approximately four years later, there is another block halving, and it goes down to 12.5 Bitcoin, which is where we are today. In 2020, in the summertime or springtime, there is going to be another block halving, um, which will be the third block halving, sorry, the fourth block halving, and we're going to go down to um, six and a quarter Bitcoin per block. Now it's embedded in the code in that it is checked for each block in that every node checks that the reward or block subsidy that exists in a block cannot exceed uh, the expected current block subsidy based on how many blocks have elapsed. So right now every participant in the network checks every block and expects to see 12 and a half Bitcoin and block subsidy plus fees as the maximum number that's in the coin base of a block. And if it is greater than that, the block is invalid and is rejected. So you can't create more Bitcoin because everybody who receives a block um, will check that you haven't exceeded the block subsidy amount um, plus the amount of transaction fees. These consensus rules being enforced by everyone who is participating, not just miners, is what uh, keeps everyone honest and prevents the miners from inflating the Bitcoin supply. So you could change it in the code, and if you change it in the code, then your node that's running that code um, would evaluate things differently. And uh, as a result, your node would accept uh, perhaps a block that had greater than 12 and a half Bitcoin subsidy today. And that block would not be accepted by anyone else, at which point your node and only your node would go out of consensus with the rest of the network and effectively be kicked off the network because as soon as it tried to propagate this invalid block, it would get kicked off the network or banned. Uh, this happens, it's a, it's a mechanism to check. So you can change the code in your node, and that will result in your node getting kicked off the network because it's not following the same rules. 
Theoretically, the developers could change the code um, for the Bitcoin Core software or perhaps many of the other clients that run on the Bitcoin network. And then whoever uh, was running that new code would effectively uh, get forked off the network. So if you imagine some miners downloading that code and some miners refusing to download that code that changed the block subsidy, it would result in a fork and a new Bitcoin network would be created that would not have a 21 million supply. And I guess most Bitcoiners would refuse to upgrade the code to make that change because it would violate the monetary principles of Bitcoin. As a result, you'd have another fork of Bitcoin. Let's call this Bitcoin inflation. And Bitcoin inflation would have a supply greater than 21 million. And would it be Bitcoin? According to most Bitcoiners, no. But you get to choose the rules you run on your node. Developers can write code, but nobody has to adopt it. So the way the consensus rules work is this balance of power, where every node that runs on the network, whether it's mining or not, um, validates all of the rules, and it validates all of the rules by running the software. And depending on what software you're running, you are either following the same rules as everybody else or not. And if you're not following the same rules, you're running your own version of, of Bitcoin, and you will effectively fork the network. If you fork it alone, you're just basically going to get banned. If you fork it with a sizable number of miners so that the forked chain can continue, you create yet another Bitcoin fork. There's 45 of those already. Um, most of them are relevant and have uh, almost no value. And as a result, it doesn't matter if people do this.